South South senators disagree with moves to include Lagos or Gun Bauchi in the Niger Delta Development Commission and over centralization of power breeding agitation, southern governors tell President Muhammad Buhari. Well, this is Cross Politics. I am Mary Anikol. South-South geopolitical zone have kicked against moves by the Senate to include Lagos, Ogun, and Bauchi, even other states that have attained status of all producing states into the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. Now, the amendment to the NDDC Act was sponsored by Senator Olamileko Adeola of the APC in Lagos West. Now, Deputy President of the Senate, Ovie Omoagege, of the APC in Delta Central, Matthew Urogide of the PDP in Edo South, and George Sekibo in uh, the PDP Rivers East disagreed, stating that the NDDC was created to address environmental degradation caused by all the exploration in the region. Now, Omoagege went on to tell Adeola to intensify efforts for the creation of Southwest Development Commission. However, Despite the opposition to the proposed amendments, the bill still scaled its second reading. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ken Robinson. He is a National Publicity Secretary of PANDEF. We have Barituka um, Loye. He is the Chairman of Coalition of Rivers, Oil and Gas Host Communities. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, I'm sure you can Again, hear me. And, uh, it's a pleasure. Ah, great. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be on your program this All evening. Right. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Robinson. Um, just as uh, Senator Ovi Omoagege had mentioned, um, the NDDC's sole mandate, when we look at, you know, when it was created and the purpose for which it was create, created, the sole mandate of the NDDC is to develop the all-rich Niger Delta region. And of course, it goes ahead to talk about developing the young people in those areas, uh, addressing the oil spills, and of course, making sure that the host communities uh, have access to better amenities. Even though if, if we go into, you know, what the NDDC has done over the years, we, we don't know if they have really addressed that issue. But now, Bringing in Lagos and other states um, that may not necessarily be part of the Niger Delta uh, into the NDDC, I'm trying to understand how that works. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, we are gradually beginning to see a situation where our national legislators are becoming legislators of anarchy. A few weeks or months ago, we got to know about an attempt by 59 status, I mean, House of Rep members from the northern part of the country, uh, trying to put in a bill to delete uh, Section 2, subsection, uh, subsection 2, Section 162 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now we are seeing a senator from, from, from Southwest proposing that Baoshi could be and Labour State and other states, perhaps Anambra State and perhaps even Benwick State, anywhere oil is found, should be added to the NDDC Commission. It's, it's ridiculous. And, and it makes no sense of who we are and what we stand for. And we, we commend the senators of the South South, particularly the Deputy Senate President, uh, Senator Joseph Bo and the other senator, for standing firmly against that, that, that obnoxious and vexatious being. It is, it is an attempt to continue to take for granted the people of the Niger Delta region. The NDDC was specifically created to address issues of degradation, issues of environmental uh, pollution, issues of the poverty in, in, in the Niger Delta. When oil is being drilled and extracted from our backyards and making billionaires and multi-millionaires across Nigeria, except in the Niger Delta. And, and they thought that something should be created to address the, the uh, social, economic, and infrastructural decay in the area. And then, of course, uh, whether that has been done over the past 21 years or thereabouts is a different discussion altogether. But it, 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 it's provocative that somebody will get up to say that this state should be added to the Niger Delta. Niger Delta has a definite definition where Niger Delta is. In fact, the truth is that Ondo, Abia, and Imo, we are even added to the Niger Delta Development Commission for political reasons. That we know. 
and, and perhaps they want to play further politics with it. Let's let them add the whole of Nigeria to become Niger Delta. That would be interesting. Uh, I'm I'm curious because um the name and the people or the communities that in, uh, are now included, just as you mentioned, the Niger Delta, if we look at the map, obviously um, is the states in that the Delta part of Nigeria, which is um, Delta states, rivers. I mean, I don't have to call the names of those states, but um, if it's a development commission of that region, and then we have other regions because of the status uh, that they have acquired or attained as all producing communities, shouldn't we be having maybe something else created for the all producing states of the country? I'm curious because, um, I mean, we have the PIB and some of the things that have been kicked against in the PIB were still asking for certain amendments. Um, if, if this should be something that they're pushing for, shouldn't we be pushing for an all producing states development commission of sorts instead of the Niger Delta um, the development commission? Again, could there be something that the NDDC is doing right, hence all these states uh, seeking to be part of it? Maybe the NDDC is doing something right. The NDDC has been a cash cow. And what's, what's the senator from uh, the Southwest is, is, with due respect, is doing is to uh, broaden the national key. The, the NDDC has, has, has served the whole of Nigeria. More, more persons from outside the Niger Delta have benefited from contracts in the NDDC than even the Niger Delta people. Most of the contracts the Niger Delta people get are clearing of water extent in waterways, and those cannot drop to 100 million, 15 million, 120 million. The, the bulk of the, 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 the jobs go to people outside the Niger Delta. And most often, Niger Delta people um, serve as fronts for those persons. And, and it's, it's unfortunate that we, we, we will continue to have persons who will play those obnoxious uh, rules for, for, for other Nigerians. But, but the fact of the matter is that your curiosity, your curiosity is right. People should be talking about oil mineral, perhaps reducing areas development permission. Uh, maybe they want us to go back to unpaddock. But the Niger Delta people will perhaps be pushed to ask for a separate development commission for the Niger Delta. Don't forget that four states in the Niger Delta, Bayelsa, Delta, Rivers, and Acquired of State, produce about 40, 90 percent, I beg your pardon, about 90 percent of the crude oil extractions, oil and gas extractions of Nigeria. We account for that, that number. And when we see people who produce 0.00% uh, or 0.1% begin to claim that they are also oil producing states. The other question that Senator Magig and the other distinguished senators brought up was these states you're listing, are they actually uh, producing comm in commercial quantity? Are they adding to the federation account resources coming from those states, adding to the federation account? If so, then they can benefit from the 30% derivation uh, based on resources produced from their states. But to say that they should be included in NDDC is an insult. And, and I'm sure that the Niger Delta people are, are, are deliberately being pushed to the world and they want us to act as, as history always has shown. Let me come to you, Tuka. Tuka, you represent um, these um, oil producing host communities. And just as um, Mr. Robinson says that it's an insult, I'm trying to get what your take is on this issue. I know that there, we're still dealing with the issue of high prep and the Ogoni cleanup. And it's not just Ogoni uh, that's dealing with issues of um, oil spills and environmental degradation. The world today is talking about, um, you know, the environmental hazards that climate change has caused. And yet we're talking about the politics of oil um, producing communities now. Could they also have a case? Because, uh, I mean, some of them made cases about the fact that, for example, Gombe uh, is fast becoming a host community. Uh, Bauchi and some other states are also, you know, gradually becoming, uh, you know, oil communities or host communities for um, oil, um, you know, uh, companies. But um, there are also those who say that uh, the issue of the 13% derivation might be one of the things that is attracting these other states into the NDDC. What's your take? Okay, thank you very much. Um, quite unfortunate that I got this information very late, but considering the timing, I had to switch into action and see how I can contribute my quarter and give uh, the position of my own coalition on this issue. See, talking about, uh, you, I had you made mention about the Ogoni cleanup and high prep and the rest of it. See, what we should also know is that 
This very government has made no pretensions about their own interests when it comes to issues that concern the people of the Niger Delta. It has been very clear. Now, they've created the cases of bureaucracy where you have a minister, yeah, board of trustee, governing council, all struggling for the control of high prep, handling a sensitive cleanup like the Ogoni cleanup. So at what point that this cleanup can be properly handled when all these whole interest groups are trying to be in charge of a very sensitive scientific project like this. That is that. Now, on the issues of uh, uh, including uh, Ogun, Lagos, and uh, uh, Bauchi as uh, oil producing states in Nigeria, there is a clear uh, uh, manipulations right from time, right from the time of the PII. I remember I did a presentation when the South South Caucus of House of Representatives met in Uyo, and I did a presentation on that issue. This uh, issue, Nigeria is an oil producing country today because we produce oil, not host community. They started with the definition of this oil producing and host communities trying to conflict and cause this confusion. Now, they make us believe that we are just supposed that this pipe is just passing through, that we are just supposed to an, uh, an oil coming from somewhere that we are just supposed. But when it comes to solid minerals, they make it very clear in the Solid Minerals Act 2007 as amended that uh, solid minerals belongs to the owner of the land. And they make no pretensions about this thing. So why would the case of oil be different? Now, you're telling us we have uh, ministry, uh, not East, uh, development Commission. Bauchi is in the north. Ogun is in the west. Uh, Lagos is in the west. So what stops them from adding those people to who? South is a uh, North East Development Commission. Why the Niger Delta? If they don't have ill intentions... Well, well the North East Development Delta, Commission does not necessarily produce oil, does it? We, we don't know about that. The reason why NDDC was created, like my comrade in the studio on, on the program stated, NDDC was created to address holistically the issues and concerns, environmental concerns, and the age long uh, over years uh, of degradation of the peoples of the Niger Delta. So many communities can no longer have portable drinking water to drink. The cleanup they are doing in Ogoni today, it was stated in the reports that gave birth to that cleanup that the people in Susuke in Ogali in LMA drinks 900 percent above the WHO standard that human beings can consume, that they should provide alternative source of livelihood. That was included in an emergency measures. Up to now, nothing has been done. And over $360 million has been released so far for that project. And nothing to show that something like that is going on. And now you're including people from Bauchi. What do they know about the agitations and the sufferings of the people from the Niger Delta? Maybe I see these things as just pure uh, grandstanding and political tokenism. What they are trying to do is to make us feel because some set of people in the country feel they have the political will, they take the advantage to suppress the people of uh, that they feel that the people of the Niger Delta do not have the political will to address those issues or to challenge these things they are doing. They did that with the, uh, in the case of the PIB that it was hurriedly passed, and they feel that they can just do these things and go away with it. But this time, our people, we feel what we can do is to embark on a social mass action where we will resist this thing totally in all totality. You, because you, the issues of uh, sorry, you you raised you raised a concern. I just wanted to want to quickly uh, put it in. Um, the, you raised the issues of the fact that you know the NDDC, and I, and I think uh, Mr. Robinson raised it too. I just want to quickly put it in. Now that we're talking about the NDDC and what he's been created for, has the NDDC been able to in the over the many years that it has been created? I think it was created in two thousand, if I'm not mistaken, and we're in twenty twenty one. How many issues as related to um, the, the reason why the NDDC was created has the NDDC been able to address in the Niger Delta? And I'm talking about everything holistically, whether it be the young people in those host communities, whether it be environmental degradation. Has the NDDC been able to do anything? On this issue, on this issue the NDDC, it has, it, to show you the ill intention that the reason the NDDC was created was to address holistically the issues of environmental issues 
and the developmental issues of the people of the Niger Delta. But as you and I can see, it is a common knowledge that the NDDC is now a pure political patronage. Where they give these things, they put people, look at the case of that you have an administrator, which is purely illegal. It is not known by law. You have, it's a pure political patronage where some persons in power feel they will put their own persons. In fact, there are a certain amount of contracts being awarded in NDDC that they don't do in here at the office in Portacourt. It's being done in Abuja. So at what point do our people participate? At what point do you say you did this to affect our but, people? But what, has been, what has been, because it's one thing to complain about an issue, it's another thing to act and push for those who have the power to act on an issue to act on it. What, has the, what have the people in the Niger Delta done? In t if, I mean, if you do not see that a particular parastatal, because the NDDC um, is now a parastatal under the Ministry of Niger Delta, okay? Uh, if the uh, NDDC has not been fulfilling its duties so far, what have the Niger Delta people done about it, other than going there to look for a job or handouts? <laughs> you know... You know, what they do is that they take advantage of the docility of our people, that if I call these people and give them some money, these people will be quiet and that... But the people take the money. Don't, don't they take the money? If you, if you feel aggrieved about how things are going and you know that those things, one way or the other, at the end of the day, will have a, a detrimental effect on your people and your uh, environment, you shouldn't be taking those monies that you're saying, allegedly, are being given to you to keep quiet. One thing, one thing you should understand is the act clearly states that the supervision, the direct, the, the, the activities in NDDC is under the direct supervision of the president. So our people do not have the powers over NDDC. That's one thing you should know. The act clearly states that it's under the direct supervision of the president. So whatever happens up in the NDDC is under the direct supervision of the president. So our people cannot be completely blamed. The president should be blamed and the presidency should be blamed because the NDDC is under the direct supervision of the president. Interesting. Mr. Robinson, here, this is where you come in. PANDEF uh, obviously is a body that is known nationwide and you have advocated for so many things and pushed for so many things. You sat on, you know, boards and uh, committees. All of these things and the allegations about the fact that the NDDC is not doing its job, it's become a cash cow. Uh, like I said, Complaining is one thing. Pushing for it to for a change to take place is another. And I did mention at the beginning, the Niger Delta is bedeviled by, I mean, all kinds of environmental degradation. I mean, talk less of uh, what's happening in Ogoni land. It's almost everywhere in the Niger Delta, especially these host communities. What can be done, apart from the politics of this, all of this, the fact that, you know, uh, whether we like the people that have been imposed on us or not, if you're not getting the dividends of the NDDC, should it be scrapped? Should you advocate for a change in the modus operandi for the betterment of the Niger Delta people? Or you're just going to keep quiet and hope that some miracle happens? Um, the truth of the matter is that NDDC, as uh, Barry Cook has said, is, is a, a, a ministry or an agency of the federal government under the direct supervision of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Today, he has delegated those powers to the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, and we see the drama that has played out in the, in the last two, three years or so. Now, the Niger Delta people are, are underprivileged. The Nigerian state. Go ahead, Mr. Robinson. Oh, I think that um, we have lost that connection with Robinson. Uh, but Ken Robinson is of PANDEF. And um, uh, let's quickly see if we can get Tuka. Tuka, are you still there? Tuka, are you still there? Well, we apologize uh, for that disconnection. Ken Robinson is of PANDEF and Tuka uh, is of the all... Uh, producing communities coalition uh, thanking them for being part of this conversation we have to take a quick break and when we come back southern governors blame um, the president over the centralization of power uh, in the federal government and they're saying this is the cost of agitations across the country we'll talk more after this break